Good morning, everyone. Just give me one second while we set up the translation. Give me one second while we set up the translation. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna just try to get, um, I'm just gonna try to find the translator. Let's, uh, maybe let's just get started. Okay. Let's get started, everyone. I, um, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to translate this in real time, but hopefully, uh, we'll be able to translate it uh we'll be able to translate it afterwards and if you are interested in um if there's any specific questions that i haven't answered during the few minutes that i'll talk then please put them in the comments if i see them in english i will try to answer them as we're speaking um, otherwise i'm happy to uh, respond to them afterwards so to begin my name is rohini har I am uh, an ER doctor in Berkeley, California, and I'm an expert uh, physician focusing on health and human rights at Physicians for Human Rights. Um, I want to thank the Sudanese American Physicians Association for uh, giving me this opportunity to speak today, and I really look forward to sharing some of the results for you. Now, what I will say is that I think the report that we're writing 
Um, uh, the report that we're writing is information that you already know. So what I'm really doing, what we really did in this most recent PHR report is kind of put that all together and provide uh, corroboration and verify some of that information that you've already seen in social media and elsewhere. Give me one second. Let me just see if I can figure out um, what's going on here. Hold on. So um, I'd like to point you out to a new report that has been put out by Physicians for Human Rights uh, on its page, and it's regarding the protests in Sudan. What the report did was uh, use uh, information that we have found from three or four different ways. Uh, we never, we tried to get information from open source media, so social media that's coming out of Sudan, we tried to get information from um, from doctors. Hold on, let's see if we can. We um, there we go. We uh, interview doctors in Sudan who are working in the field, who've experienced some of these human rights violations. And Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, okay, so, so uh, uh, I know, I know we, started we started a few minutes, minutes, but do you want me to roughly repeat? Yeah, apparently I had a, some issues with the, with the network, but fine, but live, so. Um, yeah, we can just um, start by. Um, okay. I okay. By. I see a couple I people asking, people who, asking are who are you. So, so um, maybe, maybe you can tell me a little bit. I'll get started. started. Uh, Tayba, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Li kulla al mutabi'in. Ana Dr. Abu Bakr Ahmed Ibrahim, Tabib Sudani. Uh, وحقيقه انا عضو في تجمع الاطباء السودانيين في الولايات المتحده الامريكيه uh, والغرض الاساسي من وجودي هنا مع الدكتوره هو تقديم الترجمه السريعه التفاعليه للتقرير بتاعه uh, في البدايه uh, نشكره ونشكر كل الزملاء الاطباء في كل العالم اللي بتضامنوا مع قضيتنا ووقفوا مع مع ثورتنا um, ناسف بس للتاخير كان شويه في مشاكل تقنيه على اساس اقدر اخش في اللايف واترجم من هنا انا حبدا اترجم بطريقه فوريه للدكتور سو يو كان يو كان بروسيد اي جاست ديد ان انتروداكشن ذن اي كان دو انستنت انتربريتيشن بيرفكت اوكي اوكي سو سو جاست ذس مورنينج uh, maybe, uh, maybe, uh, doctor, can you put me on mute while I'm speaking? Ah, okay. 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 So, so just, just this morning, I published a report uh, on the human rights violations around the human rights violations. Around, around the protest movement, movement in Sudan. In Sudan. So, so using, using open source, source reporting, reporting which, which is looking at looking social media, media tags, tags media, uh, newspaper, newspaper media, media and things, things like that. that. Using, using interviews, interviews with, with Sudanese, Sudanese doctors, doctors looking, looking at their, at their medical, medical records, records for people who have been injured, um, um, and, and looking at, at uh, uh, regulations in Sudan. We try to corroborate and put together a report looking at four major issues. One, One is, is human rights, rights violations, violations against, against protesters, protesters in Sudan, Sudan broadly. broadly. So, so um, this, this included information on, on the tear gas, gas and rubber and bullets. bullets. Uh, uh, is that is being, that being used, used properly? Uh, uh, there's reports, reports of many, of many deaths, deaths among, among Sudanese protesters, protesters both from, from excessive and disproportionate use of tear gas, gas and rubber bullets, bullets but, also but also from, from live ammunition. Do you want to um, طيب الحقيقه الـ الـ المنظمه اعتمدت في التقرير اللي هتتكلم عنه قبل شويه 
على مصادر متعدده من من المعلومات منها الشهادات من شهود عيان على الارض من من المواطنين او حتى من من العمال في المجال الصحي بالاضافه الى بناء بالتعاون مع ناشطين على الارض قدرت تطلع على تقارير طبيه موجوده من من المستشفيات بالاضافه الى الاعتماد على وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي المختلفه والفيديوهات والتفاعلات الشاركة كل الفاعلين في السودان بكثافه في الفتره اللي فاتت دي يعني التقرير ركز على أربعة نقاط أساسية النقطة الأولى هي التجاوزات ضد المحتجين في استخدام القوة المفرطة تجاه المحتجين تحديدا استخدام الوسائل العنيفة في صب الاحتجاجات بالإضافة إلى استخدام المفرط للغاز المسيل للدموع وبرضو استخدام الرصاص الحي Okay. okay. So, um, after, after looking, looking at, at the protesters, the protesters we, we then used uh, all of the data, data to look, look at three other issues. issues. One, One was, was attacks, attacks on, on hospitals in Sudan. Sudan. The, the second, second was attacks on doctors and um, other, other medical, medical personnel. personnel. And, then and then finally, finally to look, look at, at any evidence, evidence of torture. torture. طيب الاركان الثانيه للتقرير كانت التسجيل الاعتداءات على المنشات الطبيه بمختلف انواعها في السودان اثناء الاحتجاجات دي بالاضافه الى الاعتداءات على الافراد سواء المواطنين المستفيدين من الخدمات الصحيه او العاملين في المنشات دي Uh, is, is there, there still, still an echo, doctor? doctor? No, I'm good. Okay. okay. What, What we, we found, found is that, that there's human, human rights, rights violations, violations across, across the, board the board on all of these issues. issues. And, I'll And I'll just outline, outline it briefly, but, but the report is available in English and Arabic. Arabic. Um, طبعاً إحنا يعني هنقوم أثناء اللقاء ده بنتكلم عن التقرير بمجمله. لكن التقرير اوريدي موجود ومتوفر بالنسختين العربيه والانجليزيه. So, number one, we identified that at least 60 people have been killed among the protests and that beyond that and that beyond there's been a lot in a lot of people who are injured. Uh, mostly from tear gas and rubber bullets. Um, طيب التقرير بيتكلم عن اكثر من 60 شخص قتلوا ديورن الاحتجاجات دي بالاضافه الى الاصابات المباشره سواء عن طريق استخدام الرصاص المطاطي او حتى استخدام عبوات الغاز المسيل للدموع از از وسيله للاستهداف الشخصي <تصفيق> I'm afraid, I'm afraid I think there's still an echo. echo. Is, is it? it? Um, 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 طيب, uh, طيب يا شباب, um, I'm going to ask you to ask me to ask Okay. Doctor, Doctor, maybe, maybe I, will, I will, um, maybe, maybe I will take, take you off, off okay. and, and then, then talk, talk for a little while, while and then, and then, and then, then add you again. again. Okay. Is there an echo now? I think that's okay. All right. Sorry about that. Um, let me do it in English, and then if there's a translation issue, um, 
we'll have Dr. Abubakar come back later. So, uh, uh, okay. So, uh, again, we talked about four different issues. Uh, the use of tear gas, rubber bullets, and live ammunition against protesters. Uh, two, the use of um, uh, targeting and persecuting doctors in Sudan. Uh, three, attacking health facilities in Sudan. And then four, uh, any evidence of torture, both in detention of physicians, but then generally as well. And what we really found was that there was human rights violations across the board. There was 60 doctors, uh, I'm sorry, 60 people who died. Among those, I think there was about three that were medical personnel, medical students or doctors. Uh, but beyond the 60 people that died, which is a huge number in a protest movement like this, there was also many, many people who've been injured, disabled, um, and just really intimidated and persecuted. Uh, and that was probably in the hundreds. We also found that um, there was at least seven hospitals that were targeted uh, and attacked. Now, I think you all know about the main hospital. I think it's called the Omduran Hospital and uh, how, prote uh, how uh, security forces entered that hospital. And then um, there were six others that were also targeted, uh, mostly in January and February. Third, we found that physicians themselves are being directly targeted, potentially for their involvement in the movement, um, but also uh, just as a form of intimidation and persecution. So in addition to, uh, to major attacks on the hospitals, uh, physicians have been attacked in their homes, um, in the dormitories where they live, um, sometimes in medical facilities, and, uh, and if they were identified as physicians on the street uh, during the protest movement, then they've been specifically arrested and, uh, and detained in special facilities. And then finally, we looked at any evidence of torture. Now, we know from previous research and other human rights reports that uh, torture among detention uh, detainees in Sudan has been a problem for decades. And it doesn't look like anything like that is stopping now. Um, as one of our uh, commenters just mentioned, Sudan is one of the most aggressive regimes in the world. And, and the torture that's going on there, we largely don't know exactly what's happening. From the reports that I do have, um, there's a famous report of, uh, of the kind of torture that uses temperature, so extreme cold, things like that. Um, aggressive interrogation, uh, humiliation techniques, things like that. And then um, there were reports of uh, unnecessary beatings, things like that. But the honest truth is, we really don't know what's going on inside the prisons because a lot of people aren't getting out. What we do know is that people are being held without charge, uh, they're not allowed to see their lawyers, and they're not allowed to see their families. And that physicians and other medical personnel are being held separate from, from the general population. So based on these findings, and again, we used uh, social media, but we also used uh, interviews with physicians on the ground, uh, medical records to make sure we're corroborating that they actually were injured when they said they were, and finally, legal regulations. What we found is that uh, Sudan is violating both international legal standards as well as its own interim constitution that guarantees the rights of assembly, the right to speech, and um, all the other basic rights that are in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. And you can read the report for the specific recommendations to the government of Sudan and to the international community. Um, primarily, those are things that you might already guess, that we ask that, we demand that uh, protesters are uh, released when they're jailed for no reason, and that uh, the torture stops. We also demand that the international community um, promote rights of the Sudanese people and that the international medical community work with Sudanese physicians to um, help advocate for them. Uh, what I'd also like to mention um, is for those of you who are watching, both 
from Sudan and elsewhere. Hold on one second. Let's see. I'm not sure who that is, so let's not enter him in the conversation yet. Um, what I'd also like to say is that there's things that the normal person on the street can do. So number one, what we need to know is that people who are injured during the protests, and especially those who have been tortured and interrogated in jail, can suffer both short-term and long-term trauma. And so, you know, if someone's been um, imprisoned, if someone's been tortured, even if they've just been part of a protest and um, have been traumatized, please take care of, your, of those people. Um, there can be long-term physical trauma, but there can also be long-term psychological trauma. And that doesn't mean anything about, um, uh, you know, different people can have different, uh, different experiences of that. Um, number two, I think it's really important for the local people to know that you're not alone and that we are watching. Uh, Physicians for Human Rights will be, will continue to watch what's going on. And I know there's been um, concerns that the international community is not paying attention to what's going on in Sudan. And we're hoping to change that. Uh, just today, based on this report, um, the Sudan protests have been written about extensively um, in newspapers in the United States, including the Washington Post. Um, I saw it in Haaretz in Israel, as well as in other places already. And so I hope to bring more attention to these violations in Sudan and hope that they change. And three, um, uh, I'd like to really uh, think about what you can do in terms of the protests themselves. And I think that is knowing your rights and knowing what to do if you're exposed to some of these weapons. So knowing your rights, you all, all of us have the right to free speech, to say what we want, and we also have the right to assemble with those that we want to assemble with and protest uh, what's going on in our community. Let me see if I can get the translator back on. Uh, number two, I wanted to say that if you are exposed to tear gas, uh, there's important things to think about. Hold on one second, let's get that translator back on. Um, so there's, hello again. Yeah, I'm back. Um, Did you figure out the echo thing? Yeah, so I'm trying to use my headphone and I hope that minimizes uh, minimize the echo, but I need... Yeah, I don't hear an echo now. So okay, let's do a sound um, check. Let me just ask our audience. طيب يا شباب معلش نأسف للي حصل لو سامعني كويس أو الإيكو بقى أحسن يا ريت بس تعملوا لي كومنت. Okay, I don't think there's an echo now. Okay. That sounds good. Okay. Okay, so um, I don't think it's worthwhile to go back and say right. everything I was saying, but maybe we can start now. Mm -hmm. Um, so what I think is really important is for uh, people to know what their rights are. And so people have the right to free speech and to free assembly, to gather with those that they want, to say what they need to say as long as it's peaceful. Um, طيب, um, ال, uh, يعني التقرير ده من الحياة المهمة اللي حابب أكد عليها um, اللي هو نشر الوعي uh, في المجتمع كله إنه um, حق التعبير وحق الاحتجاج السلبي هو حق دستوري مكفول للجميع في كل الدساتير العالمية وفي الميثاق العالمي لحقوق الإنسان بالإضافة إلى الدستور السوداني. Um, and I think it's really important for physicians to know that they um, have the right to do what they want, to both have the political affiliations that they want, and to treat people of all political affiliations, and that the government really can't or should not stop them from doing that. Um, الحاجة الثانية المهمة um, اللي هي بتتكلم عنها إنه um, كل ال, um, الأطباء من حقه uh, يكون عندهم uh, انتماء سياسي ويعبروا عن ال, عن ال, عن ال, انتماءاتهم وبالإضافة إنه لازم يعني علاج للمرضى أو تقديم الخدمة الطبية 
بعيدة عن أي انتماء سياسي لكن الانتماء السياسي الشخصي أكيد حق مقفول And I noticed that a lot of you are saying that you know your rights. It's the government that doesn't know them. Um, and that's a valid point. So the, the third thing I want to mention is uh, if you are exposed to these uh, crowd control weapons, what to do. So tear gas, um, you know, sounds benign compared to live ammunition. And it is. There's a lot fewer injuries with tear gas than live ammunition. But it can also cause serious injuries. It can mostly cause serious injuries when the actual canisters strike people. Um, uh, I want to give you a little bit of information about how to deal with these measures. I'm talking about the gas that is affected by the gas. It's not a good thing, but it's a good thing. It doesn't have any effects on the health. But the thing that we have seen اللي اكتشفناه او اللي وجدوها في التقرير انه تاثير المقذوفه نفسها المقذوفه بتاعه الغاز المسيل للدموع ممكن تعمل اضرار and we have multiple reports that um, the NISS is actually targeting people um, with the canisters causing them injury this is a, a strategy that has happened in Bahrain in Egypt and in other protests as well um, قوات الامن السودانيه اتضح انها بتستخدم استراتيجيه اللي هي استخدام المقذوفات بتاعه الغاز المسيل للدموع لاحداث اثر جسدي الاستراتيجيه دي اتعملت قبل كده في اكثر من دوله المنظمه شافتها قبل كده في البحرين بالاضافه الى مصر so uh, the other things to know about is that tear gas can cause chemical injuries and burns And so if you're exposed to tear gas, um, just try to wash it off or get lots of fresh air. The medical advice is also important to deal with the gas that is related to chemical activities and chemicals in addition to the use of the gas. So the best way to do this is to use the gas that is the gas that is the gas that is the gas that is the gas. بالاضافه الى البحث عن التهويه المناسبه والابتعاد عن مكان الغاز. Uh, in terms of, lie, of rubber bullets, they can really cause severe injury, especially when they hit the delicate bones of the face, the head, or the neck. Um, اخطار الرصاصات المطاطيه um, كبيره خاصه في الاماكن الحساسه uh, واهمها العظام الرقيقه في الجمجمه. بالإضافة إلى إلى الوجه بشكل عام. So I understand that there is going to be large major protests tomorrow, uh, and I want to encourage all of you to be aware of these rights, to know that we're watching, and um, and to continue in your movement. Um, بتقول إنه المنظمة على علم بالتحضيرات الكبيرة للمسيرة. بتاعت بكره بالاضافه الى كده هم مستمرين في تقييم الوضع وحابه تقول انه الناس تكون واعيه بحقوقها وانها حتكون والمنظمه حتكون موجوده ومراقبه الوضع بشكل كثيف. Now um, I think what I'd like to do now is uh, just give you all an opportunity to ask any specific questions that you might have about the report. Um, I will let you, uh, as I mentioned before, it's available in English and in Arabic on Physicians for Human Rights on their website. Um, and then as I wait for you to uh, um, ask some questions, let me just, uh, now that we have Dr. Uh, Dr. Abubakar back as the translator, let me just do a one minute summary of what I said before. Um, and then please, uh, if you have any questions um, that you think I could answer, then if you put them in the comments, I'll read them uh, out loud and then um, and then I will uh, try to answer as many as I can. Okay, in the end of the video, we try to make a brief explanation in the beginning for the result. After that, the doctor will be ready to answer any questions that you can leave in the comments. So just to summarize, uh, my name is Rohini Har, and I am a physician uh, expert 
on human rights issues at uh, an organization in New York, uh, based in New York, called Physicians for Human Rights. Dr. Rohini Hart, she is a doctor who is specialized in medicine from the United States of America. She works in a national organization called Tibba from the rights of the human rights and is in New York. We recently published a report on human rights violations among uh, in Sudan in the movement uh, on our website. You can look at that. It's available in English and in Arabic. Uh, and she's also working on a book on uh, As Jamal Abdul Rahman, Rahman asks, um, we used a variety of different sources to get uh, information on Sudan because I obviously am not in Sudan, I'm in California. Uh, those included social media sources. So we looked at um, uh, tweets, we looked at different um, websites that were available in Sudan, um, and we tried to access as much publicly available data as possible. We corroborated that with interviews with physicians and other people right on the ground in Sudan. Um, تتساءل عن مصدر المعلومات مصدر المعلومات كان وسائل التواصل الاجتماعي بمختلف انواعها بالاضافه الى المعلومات المتوفره للعامه وبالاضافه الى مقابلات شخصيه مع المتاثرين داخل السودان طبعا المنظمه هي موجوده او الدكتوره موجوده خارج 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 السودان لكن عندها اتصالات مع الاشخاص داخل السودان and we looked at four major issues. Violations against protesters, such as um, excessive and disproportionate use of force. Uh, al, al التقرير, uh, عكس, um, al الأرض, al 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 Three was attacks on medical personnel, especially doctors. And finally, four was any evidence of torture. Um, and and what we found was that there's human rights violations across the board on all four of these spheres. والأكد التقرير إنه هنالك تجاوزات في كل الأربعة مناطق أساسية للتقرير. Sixty people have died. Many more have been injured. Uh, seven hospitals, at least, have been attacked, and uh, at least about a hundred physicians have been um, arrested and detained. More, most of them have been released now, but there's still at least 15 that are still in jail. بالحديث عن الأرقام عدد الضحايا الناس اللي توفوا من الاحتجاجات دي أكثر من من 60 بالإضافة إلى عديد من المصابين بمختلف الإصابات أكثر من سبعة مستشفيات عرضت لانتهاكات جسيمة. الأطباء كانوا مستهدفين بشكل مباشر بنتكلم عن أكثر من 100 طبيب تعرضوا للاعتقال لحسن الحظ أغلب الدكاترة ديل أطلق صراحهم لكن على الأقل في أكثر من 15 دكتور الآن موجودين تحت الاعتقال Now I think many of you who are in Sudan already know that this has happened um, and, that, and that this is the truth of what it's been like in Sudan for the past few months uh, بنعتقد إنه الناس في السودان الموجودين على الأرض بيدوا التقرير ده مصداقية كبيرة لأنه هم شواهد عليهم. But our hope is that by publishing this report and providing corroboration for all of these um, things that people already are talking about, that the international community will pay more attention. بنتمنى من التقرير ده أو عكس الحقائق الواقع على الأرض من خلال التقرير ده. إن المجتمع الدولي بشكل عام يبقى أكثر حساسية ويقدر يتفاعل أكثر مع قضايا السودان. And I know that there's going to be still be problems. We all know that Al Bashir has already been indicted by the ICC, and that you know that's been for ten years and nothing's happened. 
احنا واعيين بالوضع السياسي وانه عمر البشير عنده خطاب ادانه من محكمه العدل الدوليه لها اكثر من 10 سنوات بدون اي تفاعل كبير من المجتمع الدولي. But I really hope that this uh, movement the past few weeks and months presents a unique opportunity to shed a light on what's going on in Sudan. ونتمنى التقرير ده ان يكون فرصه كبيره لعكس الواقع الحاصل في السودان الان. So uh, someone asked what measures can be taken in using security for excessive force. So as I mentioned, tear gas, um, rubber bullets, and live ammunition have all been used. Um, tear gas, a lot of people think is the safest and it is among those, but there's really a risk that the canisters can injure, so be careful of those canisters. بترد على سؤال انطرح بخصوص كيف التعامل مع مع الاساليب اللي استخدمت تستخدم القوات الامنيه تقرير اثبت خطوره الخطوره المعروفه للرصاص المطاط والرصاص الحي حتى الغاز المسيل للدموع اللي هو في 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 العاده وسيله نوعا ما تعتبر حميده في فض التظاهرات كان في خطوره من من المقذوفات نفسها على عدت الى اصابات جسديه And then Ismail asked, what role is it to make Trump change his opinion about al-Bashir? Well, I don't have a perfect answer to this, um, as we all know what's going on with President Trump over here. But uh, what I would say is that uh, I'm hoping that the international community will pay more attention as the protests this weekend get bigger, um, but that we also hope that everyone can stay safe and that there's less attacks. Um, في سؤال uh, بيتكلم عن كيف uh, تغيير وجهه uh, نظر الرئيس ترامب uh, او التخلي الرئيس ترامب عن دعمه للبشير um, الاجابه كانت ما عندها اجابه واضحه كيف ذلك يتم لكن تامل انه المجتمع الدولي uh, يكون مهتم بشكل اكثر بالوضع في السودان وعن طريق uh, التظاهرات الكبيره بكره وعن طريق التقارير uh, الحقوقيه ده ممكن يؤدي الى عكس الواقع في السودان ومما يؤدي الى اهتمام اكثر من المجتمع الدولي. Um, second, uh, someone asked who, what can people in the United States do? I think the Sudanese community both uh, outside of Sudan can really help by promoting um, what's going on, even if it's small, like talking to your non-Sudanese friends about what's going on. What I find is that a lot of people don't know Um, and so what I try to do is just share that information with people. I think the more people know, the better. في الإجابة على سؤال كيف الناس الموجودين في الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية يتفاعلوا مع مع الأحداث ويخدموا الإجابة كانت إنه أهم حاجة نشر نشر الوعي بالقضية لأنه أغلب الناس ما بتكون عارفة الحاصل فمشاركة بمشاركة الأشخاص اللي حوالينك أو الأشخاص اللي تعرفهم تكلمون عن الوضع تكلمون عن عن السودان بتنشر ال ال الوعي عن الحاصل في السودان الآن. تافا asked why do we not find support from the foreign media or the Washington Post? I mean I think this is a travesty. Obviously they're more interested in I don't know Brexit right now than anything else. But I will say that the Washington Post just wrote an article based on this report um, this morning. Um, في سؤال عن سبب عدم اهتمام الوسائل الوسائل الإعلام في الولايات المتحدة uh, تحديدا واشنطن بوست uh, بالشأن السوداني um, الإجابة كانت إنه um, احتمال لأنه في بالنسبة لهم في قضايا uh, خارجية أكثر أهمية uh, مثلا قضية خروج بريطانيا من الاتحاد الأوروبي uh, لكن بعد التقرير ده الواشنطن بوست كتب التقرير مستند على على تقرير الحقوقي والكلام ده اليوم الصباح. Great. Um, okay, great. Uh, I think uh, I think maybe we could end there. We've already taken up a lot of people's times. I see that there's about 540 people listening. I really appreciate that. Um, Again, I uh, lead you to the report on the website for Physicians for Human Rights. And I would encourage you, um, if you haven't already, to join SAPA. Um, they've been doing tremendous work um, right here in the United States with the protests. And for those of you who are like, what should we do? I think that's a really great opportunity 
to get involved and to really help. Um, I'd like to particularly thank the doctors at SAPA who've been really helping me with the report. And, um, and as you guys say, hopefully he'll fall. <laughs> thank you. Shukran. حقيقة الدكتور بتتقدم للشكر لكل المشاهدين أخذنا كثير من وقتكم وشكر أساسي لتجمع الأطباء السودانيين بأمريكا اللي هم كانوا أدوا مساعدات كبيرة في تقديم في تقديم الريبورت ونشكر كل المشاهدين وأنا برضو عبركم بنشكر الدكتورة Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're very welcome. And if anyone wants to reach out to me directly, I'm happy to um, lead them to the report or answer any specific questions. Um, if you know of, of media reports that are interested in this, I'm happy to talk to them. Um, yeah, I'll do everything I can to get this out. Um, uh, Thank you. Shukran. But I can tell you, Dr. Bad, shukran, Jamia, in the الابواب مفتوحه لاي شخص عنده سؤال او استفسار او عنده اي مواد ممكن تساعد لعكس الوضع في السودان ممكن يكتب لنا في الكومنت بعدين واحنا حنتواصل مع مع الدكتور على اساس نوصل نوصل الاجابات لكم And I'd like to finally mention um, I know that there's big protest tomorrow so I'm going to work to try to get some information out before the protest and hopefully prevent more people from getting hurt. Um هي مهتمه كثير بالاحتجاجات او التنظيم الاحتجاج اللي حيتم بكره عاوز تتاكد انه الجميع يقوم بالاحتجاج ويحافظ وفي نفس الوقت بيحافظ على سلامته الشخصيه وانه هي حتكون او المنظمه بجميع حتكون كل موجوده على الارض لعكس كل الاحداث اللي بتحصل. Okay, great. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. طيب شكرا جزيلا مع السلامه.